Hi guys and welcome to the Charlton vs Sunderland match preview. Now of course this weekend we do go away from home to the Valley to take on Charlton, a team which we're very, very familiar with and uh, I still have a bit of PTSD from Wembley so I don't like saying the name very much but of course we do go away from home to take on Charlton on Saturday, 3 o'clock kickoff, and uh, it, it is going to be a very difficult game. Charlton haven't had the best of starts but I still, you know, they've just been relegated from the Championship recently. They do have their problems off the pitch and on the on on the pitch as well uh, ever so slightly at the minute because they haven't had the greatest of starts to the season. It looked okay starting off. They went away from home to Crew, where they come away with a two nil win. But again, stats on everything. But if you do look at the stats, Crew absolutely battered them. They had a lot more uh, possession and chances. I think Charlton had seven or eight shots to Crew's eighteen, nineteen, nearly twenty shots. Um, and you know, again, it, it, it can't look look uh, just purely at stats for a game. But if you are going off that, uh, Crew definitely should have at least come away with a draw with that game. Then they did go into the Carabao Cup. Uh, they did lose three 0 to West Ham, but you know it's a Premier League team. I'm not going to take too much from that. But back into league action, they did um, welcome Doncaster, another team who I expect to be in the top six or there or thereabouts. And they, uh, they lost 3-1. Looking at the stats, uh, it was a lot more of a close game. But Doncaster were clearly a lot more ruthless. And then last time out against Lincoln, who have had a brilliant start to the season. Lincoln, they've won three from that opening three. They beat Charlton by two goals to nil. So I think now is probably a better time than any to take on Charlton while they're going through this uh, this difficult patch early on in the season before they found the feet. Because I think, you know, as the season goes on, Charlton will start to pick up and start to show their worth because we know what the, how good they can be. They have some really good players within that squad, and I'm, I'm sure they will be at least minimum top six this season. But we can't think about that. We need to think about us and us only, and we need to be ruthless ourselves, as we did mention uh, earlier regarding Doncaster. So we need to be ruthless ourselves. It looks as though Max Power has or will return after the little niggle he did pick up last week, uh, which of course meant that he didn't feature against Peterborough in that 1-0 victory against them. Uh, Scowen, uh, not so, sorry, uh, Dobson will be playing, or he'll be seeing out, sorry, his last um, uh, game of suspension, so I don't think he will be featuring. Uh, Maguire, who did go off in the last game as well, uh, it was more of an impact injury. I expect him to be in the squad. Whether he starts on that, I do not know. So I'm expecting a similar squad, uh, but with Max Power in there. Uh, as well, so this is going to be my preferred starting eleven. Again, as usual, this isn't the eleven that I believe Parkes is going to use, but this is the eleven I think we should use personally. And of course, in the comments down below, you can let me know what squad or what starting eleven you think we should be using. So, of course, we've got the usual formation. We have Lee Burge in goal across the back three. We had another clean sheet last time out, so I don't see the point in changing that. Tom Flanagan, Bailey Wright, and Willis. You know, Flanagan's someone who I've, you know, I've, I've got on his back in the past, but. He's actually been very solid. Of course, his ball control and his um, his distribution of the ball is still always going to be questionable. But defensively, he's been very, very solid. Bailey Wright, of course, he is key. He is so, so key within that back three. And Willis as well with that pace and strength. I think we have a very, very good back line this year. O'Neill on the right-hand side or as the sort of right wing back. Hume on the opposite side. Now, in the middle, this is where I find it really difficult. Of course, you've got power. And I think away from home... We do need more energy in the middle. But the fun that Ledbetter has been over the last couple of games, I, I can't find it in myself to bring him out. I think he's been that good. And it's not like just because he scored the penalty or anything like that, he's tracking back defensively, he's been great. And getting forward, or his forward passes and his forward thinking, is has been phenomenal over the last couple of games, it has to be said. And Scowan, for me, this is the one where I do feel like Power is probably going to rotate and use Power over Scowan. But for me, I just think Scowan, even though I don't think he had you know, a world-class game against Peterborough, I think he did enough. I think he did a lot of the dirty work that I don't think a lot of people have seen or noticed uh, off the ball um, against Peterborough's times where you know, he'd mark other players uh, just out of the play completely. And, of course, he can get forward. He has the pace. And he has such an engine on him as well. I think away from home, that's what you need. So I would have gone for Ledbetter and Scowen. Now, as the front three, I think Gooch should drop to the bench. I think he's definitely... He's become, for me anyway, a bit more of a impact player. Come off the bench a little bit how he was against Oxford. I think O'Brien offers more throughout the duration of 90 minutes. 
He, he presses really well. He does have a little bit of pace. He's very good technically. And I think he, do, he should be starting to, for, for me, Aidan O'Brien. And he can score goals as well. He just needs to be given the opportunity. Maguire, as I did say, he did pick up a bit of a knock in the last game. So it wouldn't surprise me if maybe Aidan O'Brien and Gooch started maybe. And maybe they just put uh, Maguire on the bench just as a bit of a, a precaution. But for me, I think if he is fully fit, Maguire, you have to have him on the pitch. He wasn't great uh, against Peterborough. I think his deliveries were quite poor and maybe not through any fault of his own. He had his back to goal quite a lot against uh, against Peterborough and he's coming deep for the ball where he's not really uh, too useful. But I think if the game opens up and as the game goes on, that's where Maguire is very, very lethal. And up top, I don't have a clue why Wyke even started or played against Peterborough because he offered absolutely nothing. Even when he comes on as the last stages of a game and we try to see a game out, he's not he don't have the pace to press a back line enough and you know trying to put a bit of pressure on him. He, he doesn't do it well enough for me. So for me I would start Danny Graham. Uh, I just think he can ruffle, ruffle some feathers. He's very good at bringing other players into the game, i.e. Aidan O'Brien and Chris Maguire. And he can cause problems in the box. He does get into some decent positions in the box. Whether he gets on the end of crosses, it, it, you know, that remains to be seen. But he puts challenges in. Because so many times against Peterborough, Hume, who has had a backlash in the past about his poor sort of final ball, he was putting in so many very, very good crosses into the box. And there was no one there. And Wack was just wandering around, around the edge of the box where he was just absolutely useless. There's no point in him being there. You need someone who's going to make that run in um, either down the centre, back post, or run across the front man. And Graham can do that. Although he is aging a little bit. He's not the paciest. But he is very, very useful. I would like to see... Uh, will Grigg brought on towards the last stage of the game, depending on the scenario of the game? And of course, if Maguire isn't 100% fit, and maybe Gooch moves over to the left-hand side later on in the game, coming off the bench, I would like to see um, Dan Neal come on as well towards the last stage of the game, who has just signed a new three-year contract, which is brilliant, but there's no point in signing him on a new contract if you're not going to play him, because he has so much more technical ability and creativity than a lot of players within this side. So I think it'd be really unfair not to play him, maybe bring Diamond on as well. Um, but that is the side that I would use against Charlton this weekend. Now for my score prediction for the game, and I don't think my score predictions have been that good this season, which is a shame, because usually I'm quite good with my score predictions. But um, last weekend, or last Sunday, should I say, I did go on the Speak Sunderland podcast where they did ask me for my prediction, amongst other things. We spoke for a good hour or so, Gary Bennett and a few others. Uh, we had a good chat, and it was uh, it was really, really fun. You should go listen to it, um, where we just discussed the Peterborough game, and of course, as I say, uh, predictions for this weekend's game against Charlton. Now, I did originally predict a one all draw, but that was sort of more so because... I probably wouldn't be particularly bothered if we did get a draw, meaning that I'd accept it. I'd, I'd take a draw away from home against Charlton. But now looking at it, particularly through Charlton's poor start to the season, for them anyway, from their standards, I think we can get a win from this game. I think it'll be tight. But I am going to go with a 1-0 Sunderland win and another clean sheet, which is a big, big thing for me, clean sheets. We haven't conceded from open play in the first three games. We've obviously conceded a penalty. First game of the season, in the first minutes of the season, pretty much as well. But I'm going to go with a Sunderland 1-0 win away from home against Charlton. So that'll be it, guys. You let me know who you would play in your starting eleven for Sunderland against Charlton. And, of course, your score prediction as well down below in the comments but if you have enjoyed this video please hit the like button for me it'd be massively massively appreciated and subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the sarnia army but for now you take care and stay jamming